Hello everybody and welcome to the TDP YouTube channel. Hi guys, I'm Robbie uh, from TDP. Um, today we want to do the first of many videos on how to use uh, Lynx PC Link software for the G4 uh, Plus and G4X series. Now mainly this course will uh, revolve around the G4X software, but uh, a lot of the things are backwardly compatible with the G4 Plus, and if they're not directly compatible, we probably will just show you the differences so you'll know. So um, this video is an overall introduction to the PC Link software, how to use it safely. This is not how to tune your car, this is just how to use the software. It'll allow you to add and remove sensors, add and remove auxiliary outputs, and uh, to check on the system basically that you have. So let me hop over to uh, our desktop here <coughs> and open the G4X uh, software. Try to always make sure you have the latest version because um, this software is new and the system is continually evolving and getting better with use. So there's always gonna be updates. So you have the software installed on your computer and here you have it now and basically nothing happens because there's no ECU connected. We're not gonna connect an ECU right now, but let me give you a hot tip. If you've never connected your ECU to a computer before, to the particular computer, do not connect the USB cable under any circumstances until after you have installed the software or you'll have USB driver problems. That can be quite difficult to fix sometimes. Okay, so here we go. Um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna run you through the software, but to do that, first of all, I really need to open a uh, base file. So I'm just gonna open something here. I have a base file here for, um, yeah, uh, for E Toyota. Doesn't really matter. This is a monsoon base file. Okay, so this is basically the standard config you get from uh, link uh, the standard enough layout um, there are layouts up here in layout and you can go load layout and you can load a more appropriate one if you've only got low definition uh, screen now I'm going to load the 1920 by 1080 which is full <coughs> excuse me full HD okay I'm just showing off now because we've full HD set up all all my computers now are full HD so um, even my laptops have full HD screens. It just allows so much more information on one page. Okay, so quick rundown through uh, the software. As I say, not showing you how to do anything in this video at all. Uh, in other videos, we will uh, fun uh, focus in on the particular items uh, one at a time, uh, section by section, uh, and you'll have nice, short, concise videos that you can go to, for example, fueling, ignition, uh, inputs, outputs, so on. But this one is an overview of the software. So what you get the software is you get a series of top menus, like normal file menus that you would get. So you have your normal open, save, encrypt um, options. I'm not even gonna describe a lot of these things. Options, connection, preferences, directories, themes, ECU parameters, ECU control, you know, connect, update firmware. There'll be a, a video on updating firmware. Um, all the way down, trigger scopes, display mode, uh, ECU, log analysis, layout, you've just seen me load a layout, view, uh, creating new views, we'll do a video on that, uh, logging, uh, there will be, there's already a long video on logging, there'll be a couple more concise videos on logging, and then there are going to be some concise videos made on diagnostics based on logging information, and then tuning, uh, real-time values is uh, something that we use all the time, you'll also be shown uh, that in one of the videos, and then help really important because uh, PC Link has all the wiring information and sensor information in the help. Don't be afraid to ever click help. Okay, so that's the first set of menus you have. Then you have three more down this side, or four really. If I click off that, first of all, you've got four. So you've got log file manager. So if you've got log files, it will list the number of log files, the duration and the time. Um, you've got an event log, which will show up any fault codes like your um, check engine. That would give you a check engine light, what they are, when they occurred, how many times you can clear them there. Uh, you've got a list of all ECU parameters. We don't use that so much. Uh, more use engine settings. So this one, engine settings, is where we'll be working a lot of the time in the future. We're going to leave engine settings clicked. And uh, basically, I normally then put the 
pin to menu on it so it stays there okay last lot of menus that you will see probably are these ones here so you've got configuration fuel tune ignition tune that's fuel all the parameters for fuel laid out all the parameters for ignition uh tuning your idle tuning your cold start tuning your boost vvt tuning your boost e-throttle knock mixture maps and many more general login but we're going to go all through these as uh, separate videos so basically we're going to leave it on configuration for now and we are going to then just show you basically so <clears throat> The setup of most things uh, is down this uh, tree on the left hand side that you can click out features. So you've got configuration, like, like firing order of the engine, fuel, uh, you've got fuel setup, injectors, all that sort of stuff down to your uh, full fuel map. Um, now, why I'm staying in configuration is if you know you need to do something, but you don't know how, and you're just looking to check about what you should and shouldn't touch, it's always a good idea to go to the configuration tab rather than the fuel tab because in the configuration tab by default there is a help browser on this panel here and the help browser will be linked to what you click on here because if you watch this now as I click on individual cylinder fuel trims it's going to pop up the help on that item. So if you don't really know what you should and shouldn't do but you want to have a look at something um, by all means uh, use the configuration page, come in and click on what you think you need to look at and read the help a bit on it and then decide whether it's the area you need to be in or not. If uh, you're in any doubt, you should always ask an expert. We're always available for tech support. Um, if it's a product bought from us, we even support products not bought from us. Um, we will charge you now and again. If you ha need a lot of tech support over uh, the internet, uh, you'll get charged by the hour but um, it is available um, we're willing to do training as well in a similar situation if you wanted to be trained on a specific item so you can do stuff yourself and um, it used to be that all ECUs sold to all customers were always password protected or locked for many many years by tuners um, now we understand the case is that there are many more enthusiasts out there who want to plug into their car and be able to understand what's going on a lot of people um, just do it for fun and we are totally down with that we really don't password any vehicles at all unless they have got some really really uh, confidential IP that we have invented and uh, we can't let out the door so um, we're willing to help you on all that um, but basically you've now seen the overall um, layout of PC link there are other things there are other things you have to use like there will be other menus like the can menu for setting up can bus yet it's not in the ECU settings it's here in this drop down if you didn't see that that was ECU controls can setup okay and um, we will do a separate uh, we will do several separate probably videos on can setting up CAN to receive from Lambda to CAM devices, setting up CAN to transmit to dashboards. We'll do all those as separate uh, videos. So really you've seen the overview. The overview just shows you where the uh, software has the different items um, and how to navigate around the different parts of the software. It's not too difficult to do um, by clicking on any of these items you will, as I say, get the help on the right hand side. Very, very useful if you're not familiar. Um, so please use that if you're not sure. Please use that if you're not sure. The other thing I will say to you, um, it's always good to basically, if you just wanna have a look and learn, um, maybe if you plug into your car and you connect live to your ECU, and once you're connected live, basically you will it will automatically load the map from your car on. But one thing I will say to you, if you're only learning and you're not sure what you're doing, that's a dangerous situation because you could change something inadvertently. Now, if you change something here, we'll show you this, the next videos we'll be doing on a live ECU, but if you change something here, if you, sorry, if you change something here, um, it should highlight that there is a difference uh, and you're gonna see that, okay? But if you just disconnect from your car, that'll be fine. It might warn you, did you save it? 
If you don't want to save or store to your ECU, don't save or store to your ECU. If you're not sure what you're doing, don't save or store to your ECU. So that's showing us that there's a change here. You know, um, you can always, if you accidentally make a change to a map, you can always go Control Z, just standard Windows functionality, Control Z, we'll put it back to what it was like. Um, we do always recommend that when you connect to the ECU the first time that you go File, Save As, and just call it My Map. If it's your own car, you just go My Map Original. Okay, now that will allow you to, for example sake, and I'm gonna show you this bit now in this part of the training. I'm gonna show you now, just use the compare mode. So say we went in here to the fuel table and oh, the car wasn't, the car needed to have different injectors. So we changed the injectors, but also the fuel table changed. Um, so if we multiply the fuel table by 10%, hold fuel table is definitely changed there. Um, okay, and then we go file, save as my map original, so my map two. Now, the reason I'm doing this is now it's saved, okay? It's not red anymore. So you don't realize there's something wrong, but what you can do, or maybe there isn't something wrong, but if you wanted to compare it to the original map to see the differences, this is all I'm saying, to see the differences. So if you have saved your original map and you have done work on your map or not done work on your map, but you want to see where the differences are because suddenly your car is not running the same way it was, there's a problem and you're suspecting that maybe something has changed or you've changed something, you can always go file compare and load up your original map. Okay, so you have different map open now, the one on the car, and you open the original map in compare mode, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna highlight in red. Okay, it's gonna say fuel is red, fuel table one is red, that's where the differences are. You're gonna have your original value in yellow from your original map and your current value in black and it's all highlighted red, every cell that's different. So that's why it's a good idea, first time you ever connect, save your map, call it original, never override it, and then if you have any changes in the future that you suspect causing a problem with the car, you can go back, you can have a look at what the, where they are, and it might have many items here that are changed, and you can decide whether you're gonna put them back one at a time until you find your problem, or you're gonna put the original map back on and then work forwards by adding the changes one by one. So that's just a hot tip on making sure you don't screw up your map and you don't have to ask for technical support. Um, you don't have to ask for technical support uh, for no reason and um, cause some complications when something may have been changed inadvertently. So um, yeah, that's really uh, all about the overview. So you can see the software, that's how it is. Um, and we're gonna talk about all these different things in separate videos. So uh, really like to say thanks for watching and we'll be back soon and thanks a lot.